I have always loved peace in the home, indoor plants, and real peace. I have two small pots of this plant, also known as baby's breath, in my home office to remind everyone who comes in that peace in the home is very important to me. At work, on my office desk, I have the same plant on my sideboard to remind me that business is not just about making money. I owned a small network security business serving the local business community and a few high net worth clients. In the 12 years that we have lived in our four-room house, it has worked. We truly have had peace. However, I learned something last year. The opposite of peace is not always conflict. It can also be coldness, apathy. Yes, it's a cliché, as you'd expect, because if it didn't happen so often, it wouldn't become a cliché, would it? A year ago, my wife, Brenda, finally received the promotion she had worked so hard and courted for to become an executive assistant to the general partner at the law firm where she worked. I had been wary of this promotion for some time because the main partner was another cliché, Ross Chisholm, an arrogant, narcissistic, rude boss. You would think that Brenda, having worked at the firm for so long and seen him up close, would have seen through his act of great gift to women, but you would be wrong, unfortunately. And again, while we're on the subject of cliches, she also started staying late at work after the promotion. You have to hold on to your boss's watch, you know? And of course, the last snake in the Garden of Farewells soon followed, trips out of town. The very thought that Ross had to travel out of town was a red flag. Their law firm only worked with local clients on local matters. When I first asked why the bastard had to go out of town, the answer I received amounted to nothing more than hissing, bragging, and insults. When I dared to ask why she had to accompany him, it turned into a full-blown argument. Who the hell am I to challenge the wise judgment of a powerful and wise main partner? Yes, I love peace in the house and will go to great lengths to maintain it, but I am not without brain cells. Like millions of other guys, I have access to the internet and some stories about cheating spouses. Once I came to terms with the disappointment, pain, and anger, I decided I had to do something because I was definitely not a cuckold. I was late doing anything about my first trip to Aspen, but by the time I planted my second trip, I already had a few ducks in a row. My loving wife and her boss loved fancy places, the next of which was some luxurious beach place in the Hamptons on Long Island. In my younger years, I believed in the oxymoronic nonsense of fighting for peace and spent several years after school serving in the military. Besides my degree in information technology, I have made several friends over the years, some of whom are still in the military, but most of whom are scattered across the country in peaceful professions. One of them, Paul Halsbury, happened to be living on Long Island doing home security for millionaires who own expensive homes that they hardly ever use and therefore need to protect. It was a logic that eluded both of us. I mean, if you're only going to use the house there for a couple of weeks a year because the rest of the time you're making money to pay for it, why not just rent it for those two or three weeks? Oh no, in that crowd it was not the use of the house that mattered, but its ownership. Every village, as they say, has its fool, but the Hamptons seem to be their nursery. I had to reluctantly admit that old Ross wasn't one of those fools. He just rented a house to rub shoulders with celebrities. However, he was not smart enough to make his law practice's computer network impenetrable. Most likely, he was too busy with himself to realize that the woman he slept with had a husband who was a professional networker. Of course, it took me a week or so of evening searching but I eventually got into their email server. Being the boss and having Brenda under him at the firm, it apparently wasn't difficult for him to use his work email to organize their plans for a July conference in New York to prepare for a major trial. His other emails revealed that the conference consisted of an hour and a half meeting upon arrival to discuss the details of a settlement between one of his local clients and a company in the Big Apple, and another hour and a half meeting on the day of departure to finalize everything. Meanwhile, it was weekend at Bernie's baby party party party. Karma isn't always a bitch. She can be a sweet and loving girl sometimes, and for some reason this time her heart was bleeding for me. The house that Brenda rented for their hookup 
sorry, conference, turned out to belong to a client of my good friend Paul, which meant that it was already equipped with video and sound and all. Activities were broadcast to its servers and recorded. All we could do was sit and wait. Well, sit down and do some things to take care of the home front, including caring for my little peace plants in the house. Well, Brenda was 34 years old and a classic Brazilian beauty, tall and tanned, young and beautiful, just like in the song. Her youthful edge had softened into soft curves, and in my opinion at least, she was tanned perfection. No kids to spoil her figure. Two busy professionals. What can I say? Looks like Ross's old boss thought she was perfect too. In her heels, she looked at me, Brent Mayher, 35 years old, straight in the eyes, six feet tall. With Ross, however, she had to wear flat shoes so as not to embarrass the man. We both believed in the benefits of a gym in our clubhouse in the gated community, so we were in shape. I have green eyes, she has brown ones. That's what I didn't understand. Ross was far from Mr. Universe or Einstein, but he managed to win a real beauty queen as a wife, Miss Central Ohio, or something like that. Central Casting couldn't have done it better. Blonde, blue-eyed, Barbie in every way. She wasn't a pushover either. She had a framed MBA diploma from a top Ivy League university, and when you talked to her, you knew someone was at home taking care of business. Why the hell would he sleep with someone who, while handsome and sexy, is definitely not in the same league as Barbie? No one is perfect, as they say, and to Barbara, to her chagrin, the name Barbie stuck at school. Everyone said Barbara to her face, but everywhere they called her Barbie. Don't ask me why, but it seemed like I was one of the few men in Barbie's orbit who didn't feel humiliated by her, which meant that when we met at company events, we always had good conversations. To use another cliche, things immediately came together for us. Over time, we gained mutual respect. Oh, and each other's phone numbers, too. And so it was that at the end of June, Brenda informed me that she and her brilliant boss had to take a week-long trip to New York City for the aforementioned conference that would cover the 4th of July. My intrusions into their email have already revealed nasty details. I just nodded and said, Okay, as I mentioned earlier, I have read several stories, and most of them will involve the soon-to-be-deceived husband begging his wife to stay, not me. If she's too stupid to see that cheating means the end of our marriage, she'll be too stupid to see rationality. Loyalty is not something I think a husband or wife should strive for. It's in the contract. If you don't believe in fidelity, don't get married. No need for rocket science. So while she spent her time and energy organizing plans for their week-long honeymoon, I spent time on my number one self-care. Ever since I first realized that my loving wife was spreading her legs for the boss she now adores, I started transferring money elsewhere. My business was structured from the beginning as owned by a foreign trust outside of our community estate, and I was an employee, not an owner. So I simply invested more of our money into the business, a little at a time, until our overall joint savings account was down to an emergency fund level, as opposed to the retirement savings level it had been before. The big day arrived and the two lovebirds set off to nest in New York City. My company, having received an injection of capital from our savings account, decided to invest in a new line of business, maritime security, as I called it. With technology, you never know where the next opportunity will be, right? This, of course, required the company to purchase a decent boat that could easily reach places like the Cayman Islands and included decent living quarters. While owned by the company for the purposes of the company, it was not part of our common property. In fact, Brenda didn't even know about the boat. I was going to tell her, of course, but she worked late all the time. So when was I supposed to do it? So, I spent my time caring for my peace plants around the house, which were quietly moved from my home office to this boat in the marina. While my loving wife and her boss were hard at work in the Hamptons on their big deal, I was busy. On the first morning of their conference, Paul, a security friend of mine, sent me links to videos recorded by his system. It only took me five minutes to confirm the serious cheating, so I stopped watching. 
downloaded the files to my laptop at home, and saved a copy to the cloud. After a deep breath, I called the bastard's wife. Hi, Barbara. Can we meet for lunch today? What, why? Although she wasn't hostile, her tone sounded a little cold, as if she suspected that I was simply waiting until our spouses were out of town to hit on her. Something happened last night that I need to show you in person. If anything, her hostility increased. What's happened? Pursing my lips, I responded with equal hostility. That's what I want to show. It directly affects you. But if you're not interested, let's forget about it. Just don't complain later that I didn't tell you. It worked, and she gave in. Sorry, okay, let's meet. When and where? Deciding to have a little fun, I said, I was going to let you pick a time and place, but if you're short on time, let's meet at the McDonald's on Bridge and 7th at noon. It'll be quick. As I suspected, location mattered to her. After a sigh, she said, No, let's meet at Chipotle at the Lodent Mall. It's approaching noon. This seemed to be as low and fast as she was willing to go. While waiting for noon, I moved most of my things, including my desk, into a small storage area. I didn't have any family nearby or friends I wanted to move in with, so I lived on a boat and got online to look for an apartment. Time passed, and I decided to do my banking in the afternoon. Take your time. Brenda is unlikely to interrupt her sexual marathon to check her account balances. In her mind, Mr. World in the house was happily twirling his fingers and watering his plants, waiting for the beauty to return bearing her seductive charms. I got to Chipotle before Barbara grabbed some food and found us a table as far away as possible. While waiting for her, I turned on the laptop and recorded her husband's entertainment on a flash drive. When she placed her food on the table, her greeting was, shall we say, abrupt. Her husband's subordinate's husband ended up interfering with her day of beauty treatments, reading clubs, shopping, and more. Not feeling motivated to soften the blow, I simply turned the laptop towards her and pressed play. Ice tea sprayed from her mouth and nose as a dirty scene appeared on the screen, without sound for public viewing, of course. Barbie slammed the lid of her laptop with a hard smack, buried her head in her hands, and began to cry. Bastard, she sobbed between tears. He told me it was an important deal and didn't tell me he was taking his assistant with him. I admit... The way I showed it to her was a little cruel, but in my opinion, she deserved it. The least she could do was realize that I wouldn't call her without a good reason and keep an open mind until she found out what was going on. On the other hand, removing the patch quickly will likely result in a quicker and more decisive response on her part. So I waited and finished my huge burrito. How long have you known? She asked after using a handful of tissues to clean up the tears. A few hours. I only had suspicions, but I couldn't prove anything until this morning. Don't ask how I got it, but it was legal, in case you were wondering. What are you going to do? Divorce this bastard and take every penny I can from him. Do you think we can serve them with subpoenas in New York? Pretty sure, I said. Do you want to do this? Do you know a good lawyer? Oh yeah, I want to file for him ASAP to ruin their party for the cheaters while they're still among their rich and famous friends. Ha! We'll do them a favor. Now they can join these people with their second or third spouses. And yes, I personally know Elena Shovitz, the toughest divorce lawyer here. I never thought I'd be her client. Would you like to join me and see if we can get a multi-party discount? When I nodded, she picked up her phone. Lenny, can you spare some time for me this afternoon? No, honey, on business. Deep breath. Yeah, that bastard is cheating on me with his assistant in the Hamptons right now. Her husband is with me, and he wants you to take over his case too. Four will do. I'll text you his number. We ended lunch with silence and small talk, hostility giving way to sadness at such an unnecessary loss. On the way to the bank, I called the lawyer and answered many questions. The biggest money issues were the house and my business. The first one was joint property and we had to share it. But the business, although it absorbed most of our savings, was separate. I don't know how Ms. Shavitz managed it, but the two lovers were served with court papers the day before they went out to dinner the next day. For this occasion, 
Barbie and I sat in a secluded area in the park, phones at the ready. My wife called first, screaming, Brent, what the hell? Not catching a specific question, I waited and put it on speaker so Barbie could hear too. Are you there? She asked when she didn't get an answer. I'm here, waiting for a specific question to answer. The documents you have should tell you everything. All you have to do is sign them. Why are you doing this? Is this a rhetorical question or a specific one? I'm amazed that you think you can have sex with your boss and I'll enjoy it. What are you talking about? We're here trying to finalize a deal with Sycamore Energy, which you completed on the day you arrived. Since then, all you've done is have sex, sleep, and eat. In fact, an hour ago, you were in his arms and told him how much better he was than me. Brenda gasped. You're making this up. Typical exaggeration and overestimation. Oh, shut up. You're on your way to dinner with the Sineses at the Sunset Beach Grill. Stop lying. It's bad enough that you're a cheater. I'll put the house up for sale tomorrow and we'll split the proceeds. Enjoy the rest of your week of debauchery. I ended the call. Barbie and I sat waiting for her husband to call. He didn't call. He must have realized from Brenda's conversation that his visors were burnt, cooked, and dry. After 20 minutes of waiting, I touched Barbie's hand. Dinner? She turned her tear-stained blue eyes to me. I'm not hungry, but we probably should. Any preferences? We got up. Anywhere but Chipotle. We found ourselves in a quiet Indian restaurant. As we picked at our food, we spent over two hours reminiscing, reprimanding, asking questions, and planning. When dinner came to an end, I decided to take a chance. Barbara, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be alone in my house tonight. Would you like to spend a chaste night with me at the Marriott? Her eyes lit up. Great idea. Let's go home and grab a bag each for the night, then come pick me up. Ninety minutes later, we checked into our room. Barbara opened her bag and hung up her clothes for tomorrow. Turning to me, she said, No offense, but I'm not in the mood for sex tonight. There are no hard feelings because sex is the last thing on my mind. Which is closest? She asked with a mischievous smile. Oh, it's simple. Revenge. The first big smile of the day lit up her face. Now that's a thought I can agree with. What are your plans? I sat down at the spacious table. Let's order some room service first to give us energy for planning. We ordered a bottle of Riesling for her, three blue moons for me, and a bucket of ice to keep it all cool. She had access to all of Boss Man's credit and debit cards and reported them all lost. I did the same for my sweetie. We cleared all the accounts they had access to, transferring the funds to new ones. We then canceled their return tickets and reported their cell phones stolen so they couldn't call the phone company from their phones or anyone else. Barbara then called Ross's partners one after the other and explained how their main partner was having fun in New York at their expense with his executive assistant. None of them were surprised because they saw the signs every day. However, the fact that he stole from them to finance his illicit pleasures caused righteous indignation. Several messages landed on his phone and email, which he, of course, could not access. While Barbie chatted with his partners, I called my friend Paul, who ran security in the Hamptons. When I asked him, he admitted that he knew a couple of dubious characters who could give Ross physical trouble for a fee. The prize for dumping him in the East River or Long Island Sound was surprisingly small, but Barbie flatly refused the offer. We had no record of what passed between the lovers while they were away, but by the time they returned to the rented house, their mutual recriminations had helped our Riesling and beer slide down more easily. It seems that when Bossman's credit cards were declined, as well as Brenda's, they realized their game was up. Ross tried to call his partner only to find that his phone had stopped working, the cashier at the fancy restaurant was much less cheerful than the two of us on the couch in the hotel room with our feet on the coffee table. In desperation, Bossman apparently pointed out that it would be much cheaper for the restaurant to make a phone call than to be scammed out of several hundred dollars for an entire dinner, including champagne and dessert. So apparently he used the restaurant's phone to reach Paul Pierce, the partner he beat out to take over. Pierce trained by Barbie, of course, showed no sympathy for Ross. Having fun with your employees? At our expense? It's a cold day in hell, buddy. 
Don't ask tonight if you still have work to do. In the end, the restaurant took a photo of his driver's license and gave him a week. If he doesn't pay, they'll sue him in small claims court and make sure his bar association finds out about his blatant power play and lack of ethics. Luckily, the lovers had enough gas in their rental car to get them home, where, oh my, all the utilities were accidentally turned off. No air, no water, no electricity, nothing. It was hot and muggy in New York in the early summer. To go to the bathroom, they had to walk several blocks to the nearest gas station. Finally, they decided that returning home to face the symphony would be the best course of action. The problem is that they couldn't call the airline or access the internet to make the change. They would have to go to the airport and find out about the possibilities of change there. However, they did not have credit cards to pay the change fee. Brenda wanted to call her mom to ask for help, but she didn't have a phone, money, or credit card. She went to the nearest gas station and explained that she just wanted to call her mom, leave the number, and ask her mom to call her back. They didn't believe her, but when she passed one of her last bills over the counter, the owners asked for her number and called, leaving her mom with their number and asking her to call back. After confessing her sins to her mom in front of the immigrant store owners and enduring the reprimand she was no doubt given, she finally talked her mom into buying her tickets, a spare phone, and a credit card number, just in case. When she returned, she explained all this to Ross. What kind of businessman was Ross if he didn't have a plan B? What security did he and his firm have to allow things to shut down like that? How stupid is he? What a weak man in general. I don't know about you, but I need a shower after this, Barbie said as she stood up. If you want to save water, you can take a shower with me. But no mischief. That's what we did. It felt strange to shower naked with a beauty queen and not give in to temptation. We soaped each other up and actually had a great friendly shower. Same thing with the king-size bed. We barely got dressed, cuddled up to each other, and immediately fell asleep. The next morning, we ordered a simple breakfast and sat down at the table again. We felt like a couple who had lived together for 20 years, comfortable, compatible, and completely at ease with each other. And no sex. The rest of the story is easily predictable. Ross was demoted, and his nemesis Paul Pierce got his job. Fired? Be serious, this was a law firm. Probably others also dipped their quills into the branded inkwell, but avoided getting caught. This is Ross. I learned that the unforgivable sin is not treason, but getting caught. What drove him crazy was that Barbie divorced him in the loudest way possible. When the noise hit the fan, his partners practically forced him not only to leave the partnership, but also the staff. Brenda tried to avoid divorce by rejecting my offer of discretion if she would just sign. Instead, she hired a lawyer and insisted on counseling in hopes of convincing me to resume the marriage. Then she snapped when I followed through on my threat by sending copies of certain scenes to her parents and siblings. The next day, she brought the signed documents and disappeared, I don't know where. Barbie and I dated briefly, but we both realized that we weren't right for each other long term. She introduced me to her younger sister Camilla, who, after starting off slowly, turned out to be my soulmate. She loved swimming, the boat, and most of all, peace in her home. She even got plants for our bedroom and kitchen. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one.